I am running super late. And I apologize for running a little late. Yeah, I, it was more, uh, it was a timing issue. Uh, it is easier so I had to call my parents. And it was just, this was the best time. So, needed to get something cleared up about because they're coming in this week, and we wanted to make sure we got everything down pat. So, yeah. <laughs> also, I didn't think <laughs> this actually works fine because I didn't uh, think that, um, <laughs> I was really probably not going to get a full stream out of this game anyway, so uh, starting a little later is not exactly the end of the world. Also, it doesn't. We can go a little bit over. Again, not the end of the world. I got it. I have been poking around with this, so it's not going to be a... Well, it is going to be... I'm going to start a fresh save, but I did, in fact, play a little bit to... Okay, there's that. So I did fill my drink, right? Yes, I did. I can do that. Uh, so, I'll go into it when I start, but uh, it is escape. I'm familiar, I've played this before, so I'm familiar with how it controls. through all my the various discords in which I post that I'm going live. You know, 
what I'll do you too. And there. And I think that should be good. Alright. Enough bullshitting with various stuff. Let's actually get going. Because I've already laid. <laughs> so. Hello, and welcome to a special Sunday edition of Retro and Crapsy. And by that, I mean it is Easter. Uh, so I felt like never one to pass up an opportunity to do a special themed episode. And a special theme it is because uh, not only this gives me the perfect chance to take a look at a franchise very near and dear to my heart, uh, that being the eventual Lolo slash Eggerland franchise. Um, so, yeah, uh, for a while, like, we got through the Game Boy version of Adventure Lolo, which for the most part, or for most uh, who are familiar with the franchise, that's kind of it. That is the ending of the uh, kind of official releases of the Adventure Lolo franchise. However, uh, a weird twist, well, not twist of fate, but a weird happenstance that not a, well, Trying to figure out how to phrase it, but, um, yeah, a weird... Also, I need to check something to make sure that it's not going to start making noise in the background while I'm doing this. Do, 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 do. Um, is the fact that, um, last game in the franchise came out around 1994. Um, and right around that time, uh, there was a major shift, uh, at HAL Laboratories. Because right around the time you had Metal Slater Glory... Uh, you had the release of Kirby, which, not that those two were related, but you had HAL Laboratories kind of... Metal Slater Glory kind of killed HAL Laboratories as a third party, uh, kind of uh, distributing on their own and kind of becoming more of an official uh, Nintendo second party. And Kirby kind of um, blew, got super popular, and that's kind of where HAL shifted focus. So... Um, yeah, uh, thing how kind of became the Kirby slash Nintendo kind of making some other things like, of course, he had Smash Brothers also in that point. Um, so how really became a Nintendo second party? However, uh, how did still have some knowledge with making stuff for computers. And obviously the MSX days kind of the MSX and Commodore period had kind of fallen out of favor starting the or like definitely in the um, late 90s, but they still wanted a little, they still had some uh, computer, uh, like, they still had some computer knowledge on hand. So, HAL, uh, this HAL Laboratories had a small subdivision that didn't, I don't think lasted, I don't think it's still around, but um, if you're familiar with HAL nowadays, uh, you might be familiar with HAL Egg, which is their mobile game division, uh, making stuff like part-time UFO, uh, and I think there's a couple of Japanese exclusives. But so Hal's not exclusive to or not. It's they have precedent for making um, kind of side ventures, which Hal Corporation was. Now, Hal Corporation was a, basically Hal's PC branch. And for the most part, uh, they actually made if I remember going through their library, they actually were making print software. Um, I believe there is a Popeye licensed uh, kind of card manufacturers, if you're familiar with like print software, like the Greetings Workshop, you know, that in the, like the 90s and early 2000s. Uh, how was making those in Japan? I believe Popeye was one. I can't remember what other licensees was, but they were primarily doing productivity software with the exception of one release. Uh, that being in 1996, I believe, they released a game... Cal Corporation released what I believe was, I think it was referred to as Eggerland Episode Zero, The Quest of Lala for the PC, which was, I don't have it on hand because it's a little tricky. It's not tricky to find, but it's tricky to get working in the, the environment that I'm using today. Uh, so we're not going to take a look at that. But basically, it's the same engine that this game is going to run in. Um, but basically, it's you play as Lala, who is doing puzzles and eventually at some point gets kidnapped, uh, which leads into the release that we're taking a look at today. That in, 
it's a little sketchy about what the release schedule for this was, but the version that I'm playing today, I believe there was a version of this released in 1998 um, that was strictly for Windows 95 computers. However, the version that I am playing here, that I actually have a disc copy of this, uh, has a year mark of 1999 on it for Windows 95 and uh, 98. That being, what you're actually seeing in the thumbnail is actually the same, kind of the same box art that I have, which is Revival Eggerland, uh, released looking like a budget title for 1,980 yen, which is roughly around 20 bucks. Um, and yeah, it's a PC version of Eggerland, which has not been happened since 1986 uh, MSX release. So it's really weird seeing this on a Windows 98 computer, uh, which I am using. Oh, hold on, I actually got to move chat out of the way. So, uh, actually, I still I was trying to think. Anyway, um, so yeah, it's a Windows uh you know, it's a Windows game. And it's just kind of weird thinking of a HAL Laboratories PC game. So let me go ahead and load this up. Now. So yes, Revival Eggerland. Um, <sighs> this release is weird. Um, Going through the uh, kind of the um, going through the staff list of this, not a whole lot of it's a lot of kind of side people that like this was like their major game release. Uh, so this kind of has reeks of budget game. Um, it's very much <laughs> it's they didn't I don't want to say they didn't put a lot of effort into it, but it's it's definitely has budget vibes to it. So. Just kind of going through some of the things. Um, not a whole lot of options. Uh, you have choice about whether or not to use, um, I believe this is a general MIDI versus whatever your sound card is on your computer is. So we're gonna use sound. Uh, also, I don't have the Japanese font installed on this computer, so that's why you don't see anything in the text, but that's not gonna make a difference. At least I don't think it is. Uh, so we're gonna keep sound on. Uh, this does have auto-saving, uh, and actually I think it saves stuff as, like, text files, so easily modifiable. And I'm gonna do full screen. Uh, this forces the game to be, or the... This forces it to be at 640 by 480. Uh, which reminds me, I need to scale my vision a little bit so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Hey, Tyrion. Also, I guess we just got two things. Whatever. It is a weird style. Like, it's a kind of weird claymation look to it. And I'm not super fond of it. Like, it, it it's fitting for, like, the um, box art. If you think about the box art for, like, uh, Eggerland for the Famicom Disk System, it makes sense. But um, let's go ahead and start a new game. So, it is a standard, um, weird for a franchise that didn't really change a whole lot in its run. This plays exactly like the other ones. Not much to say. Uh, I'm going to go with the, uh, if anyone needs anything explained, uh, I will go for it. But since I've done so many videos on the Eggerland series, I'm not going to uh, sit and explain whatever anything does, but uh, this does kind of have the vibe that it, um, it's for people who have not played the franchise before, so these earlier rooms um, do kind of act as a tutorial. Uh, which, also, another thing that this does that has not been done since Revival of the Labyrinth is this is one giant connected uh, area. With some exceptions, but maybe we'll get to it. Uh, also, all the music in this game is just midified versions of songs that have been in uh, other, you know, games. No, as far as I can tell, no original tracks. In fact, some of these uh, levels seem to be um, 
some of these levels seem to be taken. In fact, a lot of these levels seem to be ta I screwed this up, didn't I? Yes, I did. Uh, so, also one thing about this is that I'm actually... There's actually a few different ways you can control this. Keyboard is obvious. You know, it just... It plays... Controls are pretty same. You use arrow keys. I think, um... Escape is your retry. Which, now there's a special animation for that. Uh, M takes you to the map. Which, by the way, you can click on things to go back to wherever you want. Uh, there's also a... Which, actually, you can see the equivalent. Is my mouse cursor going? There it is. So... This mode switches between full screen and... Um, uh, windowed mode. Give up is basically a retry. Uh, exit is basically save and close. This is your map, and you you can press this for your map. Uh, I actually happen to have a joystick plugged into this PC, so I'm using a joystick to play this. Oh, I did I did it wrong again. Uh, so, one other weird thing, I don't know why they would do this, but this game has mouse control. If you hold down the left mouse button and move your mouse, it will move Lolo. Why you would play this game like this, I have no idea. This is a very terrible way to play this game. Don't do it. <laughs> So this game actually, from what I can tell, run... You can actually... If you get an AXE file of this game and, like, get it all there... Um, uh, you actually can... Um, lost my train of thought. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, finish PDF. Um, oh, right. Uh, if you do find an EXE file of this and like have all the files needed, it is actually, it seemed like it was okay to run for the most part in modern version of Windows. The problem is, is that if you want to have any music at all, it tends to get the, make the game crash. So uh, I just went ahead and just put this in a... Uh, I just went ahead and put it into a virtual machine. Also, they don't have any detection about whether or not the <laughs> there's something right, so you're just going to have it repeat infinite. It's great. Okay. Something about... I don't know if it's just the animation of the sprites, but something about the leapers in this just looks like they're moving a little bit too slowly. Also, the, the logic for them feels weird. I'm just going to move this out of the way. Like, it doesn't feel, like, accurate to the NES games. Um. So I hope everyone is having a good Easter if you're celebrating, or I have a good day if you're not. I had plumbing issues this morning, which were fun to fix. And by fix, I mean uh, just take care of it and just have to deal with it tomorrow. Uh, this one, I know for a fact, was taken from uh, one of the Eggerlands. 
Uh, because this shows up in uh, Adventure Lola 1. And this one, I think... If it doesn't show up in Vegetal Lola 1, this one, I think, shows up in Vegetal Lola 2. It's one of them. I should have... I screwed this up. And yeah, thankfully, they... They did this, or they... Realized the thing... From Adventure... L I need to stop talking. While doing this one. Or at least I need to remember to do this a little bit first. But yeah, control seems snappy. Yeah, infinite lives. Uh, the thing that the Game Boy game and Adventure Lola 3 did. Yeah, also the Rockies look really weird in this game. I really do not like the sprite that they use for the Rockies. Yeah, Womp Jr., pretty much. Also, the Dom Medusas look a little... Like... You don't normally see them at an angle, and they just... look creepy crawly. Like, I really hate the way that those little... like, their little back tentacles... Also, it's an incredibly minor thing, but uh, this is the only time that Lolo's been depicted with um, purple shoes. Because uh, in the Adventure of Lolo games, usually his shoes are white, and in the uh, early Eggerland games, his shoes are red. So I guess they went with a kind of mixture of both. So, if I remember correctly, uh, this is this this room has this game's one new feature. And it's these blocks that are right next to Medusa's. Um, which I'm probably going to get this off first, but these are crystal framers. They work the same way... You can push them the same way as emerald framers, but... They can reflect shots at a 90 degree angle. Which means you can now egg uh, Medusa. And here. And they really, like, I guess, nail home in this one that uh, King Egger is meant to be a frog guy, but he kind of always looked like it. Also, we have uh, a choice about which uh, way we can go. Let's go left. Yeah, that's actually the first new mechan- well, there was an, uh, a new enemy in Venture Lola 3. And that was pretty much it for new enemies since Eggerland. Okay, so if I remember correctly... Yeah, this uses a the single button for both things, which always kind of makes me feel leery. Okay. If I remember correctly, I think you grab this one on the right last. Okay, I think you do this. And then this. Yeah. Then you push this one over here.
All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Hmm. Uh, is this the right... I don't think I can take... Yeah, I don't think it's the right way. Um, is this the right way? Okay. Let's try this. Okay. Now the question is, do I need to do this and then this? Okay. Okay, what? I screwed this up. Well, this has to be the right way because if you go down... Okay. Okay, there's no way. So this ha these two have to be... As far as I can tell, yeah, because there's no way to push them in any inlet. Oh, okay, let me try this. I did that in the wrong order, but... Okay. So it's the slower goal flame in this one. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay. You know, I'm not surprised that there were, that there's a lot of, um, repeats. From previous games. Okay. I always end up screwing this one up. So, I need to push... I need to push this one here, and this one down and over here.
Okay. Okay, push this one here. And then I'll push this one here. And before I forget. Push these one down. Now, I don't think this one has any weird mechanics like trying to go into the side worlds to get some um, certain special power-ups. Okay. Okay, what is going to be the... Wait, I can't push any of these out. Okay, so I can push this one. I think I might be overthinking this one. I see what I need to do. Hey, okay, push this one over here. And you push, get this one. And then you go and do this. Over here. Push it down. And then I can fully push this down. And then grab that heart. And then I just grab these two and we should be good to go. There we go. Let's see, what are our options? Okay. This was one that showed up in Revive the Labyrinth, which I think required the use of a glitch, so... I wonder... Let me just check something. Oh, it is! Yeah, I never understood why this worked like this. This direction? Yeah.
Yep, gotta stay <laughs> aligned to the heart. I don't know why that works. So the only one that I recall this this trick being required is in Revival of the Labyrinth, which was already a massive dick of a game anyway. I'm just gonna take care of this one first. Okay. That was actually dumb. So I think it's actually the one down at the bottom that actually needs to be blocked with a leaper. Yeah, so these were like, um, this one comes from a one that was like intentionally made for like, I really don't know why this one's even in here. IMO.
Okay, there's that one. Yeah, execution heavy, yeah, but not, like, straight up using use of glitch. Okay, there's that one. I think I boned this. Let's go the other direction. <laughs> Oop, wrong direction. You know what? Let's go. Oh, where is the fork? There it is. Let's go over here. I got impatient. Okay, cover it up. But do not actually grab the heart. And then you do that. And there's really nothing you can do with this one. And then just make it slightly less... ...convenient for them to go through. So probably move that to the side.
Let's see what are our choices. I think this is actually as far as I got in testing. I think, because this one came for an older one, I can't remember if those goals would be there. So another thing that this this version adds that uh, not a lot of other, or that I don't think any of the other ones had, except for actually that Toho remake had it. Um, uh, is that it tells you the direction of the water, of the current. Uh, these are gonna be still. I think I know what I need to do. Push that one there. Yeah, that should be good. Yep, and the ever-present uh, push one block a little bit too far is definitely still in the game. Oh, also I do like that for the emerald, uh, if you push an emerald framer above an arrow block, you can still kind of see through it. the feeling that one of these two doors is going to put me right in front of a Medusa. Or not. <laughs> oh. Okay. I 
God damn it. <laughs> I need to stop rushing. Actually, I don't know why I destroyed that one, because it's gonna... Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm curious. Wait, isn't that just... Yeah, that's just this one. Okay. I love weird specific minutiae about how this stuff works. Oh wait, I can actually just skip this level. Huh. That's weird, because it looks like I can just go through there, but... I wonder if it... I don't want to restart this puzzle. Let's fix this one. Yeah, I bet you this one would have been locked. <sighs> what does that look like? Well, this one has to be the right one, because... Okay. that taken care of. Oh, now you're gonna hover over there. Okay. God damn it. <laughs>
Okay, let me... S there we go. That actually is probably a really bad spot for that, but whatever. It's at least solvable. God, that noise is so bizarre. It's not a great mechanic. Oh, that one just sort of died. Covers this one, which means I can walk through here. And this one, you gotta go all the way around. Okay, obviously this is the one that needs to be flipped. So let's just take a stab at this one. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, except I have to do it. Oh, I can do it like this. There. And there we go. Also, let's see. Oh! We have come across a cave. Okay, please for the love of God tell me I hit yes. Okay, good. Okay. So, yeah, it was saying, do I want to overwrite my previous save? Oh, what is it? Oh, this is a... Oh, uh, this is Eggerland. Yeah, it was... Uh, it's... Hi and EA. Which is yes and no. And also whatever cancel was. So yeah, occasionally they do actually have things in here that are kind of sta like a uh, traditional like Adventure Lolo. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it is because I do not have Japanese text installed on this computer, because that's not that did not come default with Windows ninety eight or Windows ninety eight inst installations. I think I screwed myself. Unless. Um, oh shoot, that also might have screwed myself, but in a lesser way. Okay, let's try this and see if I'm hosed. Oh, I shouldn't be, I should go. Oh. Wait. Um, I think I can fix this. I think I can fix it. I think I screwed myself over. If I do, it didn't, but also <laughs> you needed some way to get yourself out of a pickle. Okay, now I think I should be good. Oh, 
Oh, what is this bullshit? Oh, also I should have done the other reverse order. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> That's right, they push. <laughs> okay. I actually like the fact that this music's in MIDI because it doesn't get quite as, like... frustrating. God damn it. <laughs> Yeah, this seems like you really need to know how to get the, like, to manipulate these guys' AI. Actually, I think you need to be here. Then here. Oh no. Oh no. I just reversed the order. Okay, there we go. Okay. Go down here.
Okay. They're good. Okay. This is probably gonna screw me over, but... Oh, right, and these things. Yeah, I did solo commentary for that specific reason. Oh, God damn it. That is a Don Medusa, yeah. Um, hmm. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, good. Okay. Now, what the hell do I do with this? Hmm. Hey, Loco. Oh. Let me stretch and think about this.
All right, game facts. <laughs> Oh, there's a, a fact for this that run FAQ of the Month winner for two, February of 2009. So yeah, what does the map look like here? Um, also, apparently, there is a west map compared to this is the east map. Uh, there is like 188 stages. This is like by far the longest game. Okay. So then you do this. Okay, push Emerald Trimmer IO4 up four, down six. Left, let's see, up four, left six. Okay, so we're using this one to trap. Okay, am I pushing it left or right? The right, the Don Medusa. Okay.
Okay, so now I gotta take the ones in the middle. Okay, I'm curious, what is it? I just want to know, what is this? Okay, I think I'm missing something. Oh, it's even. What am I missing? Okay, I need to... Okay, I just need to jump back. Where's that rocky spawn? Yeah, it spawns from there, but I don't know... I guess is it does it want me to do this? <sighs> That's why I hate puzzles involving Rockies. They're all the same genre and it is just be incredibly annoying. Okay. 
I think I screwed it up. And at I-10... that so much. And I don't think I can... I would say that I think like the later Adventure Lolo games just didn't have Rocky puzzles in it, but I'm pretty sure they did, just not to this extent.
wonder if someone has... Let's see. I thought someone had a full playthrough of this on YouTube. I guess it's no longer there. Hmm. Okay. I think I figured it out.
God damn it, I hate Rocky so much. <laughs> I hate these types of puzzles. This probably makes sense on why a lot of the shared staff between old Eggerland games is like Revival of the Labyrinth, which I think was a lot. This actually might be a Revival of the Labyrinth uh, level now that I think about it. Oh my god. Okay, there we go. Okay. Now, here. Okay. Push you here. Grab this. You push you onto here. Now, okay, good. You here, there, onto there. It should be up here. There we go. Now... There. Time to hopefully that Okay. I probably shouldn't have gotten the side ones first. I 
I was out. How many? St okay, how many stages are in this cave? <laughs> Sound like a toilet being flushed when they sink. That didn't give me two. Okay, so I have to do. Okay, I think I know what I need to do then. Not that. <laughs> you here. Grab you. You come back. Here is your home now. Okay. Come over here. You take that. Respawn back here. Okay. I forgot the Zag. <laughs> My hubris. Ugh. I really should grab those last now that I think about it. You 
go. it. There we go. Okay, now we're all good on that side. You? Come over here. You go here. Grab these two. Leave me right here. Now, the moment that you start... Okay. There. Oh, what fresh hell is this? puzzle so much. Went too far. Actually, I should look... What does the guide say about this? Okay. 
Bye, bitch. Okay. Now that that's taken care of. Okay. You know, I'm just going to restart this one just so I can... Okay. Okay. 
Oh! I think I remember this one, actually. This card sucks. It doesn't make, like it. It's like this guy doesn't know what the hell it's doing. Emerald Fair I09. Left one. Up three. And the horizontal Domedus is to the left of it. J08, which there isn't a J08. Left two, up four.
Okay. Okay, I think I see what to do from here. We got Amethyst with Guts Power. So, yeah, that's how we go here. We leave there. So, yeah, um, that's kind of how the flow of this game works, is that it's very open. And there are, I believe, 11 different, um, 11 different, uh, whatchamacallits? And then every time you go here, uh, basically every gem you get slowly, um, because let's see, there are, there are 10, or there are nine gems with a final level. But yeah. So. Yeah, it lowers the castle and then you can eventually walk into it and then there's a final set of dungeons. What I'm going to do here... Let's actually check to see if something... If I have access to something. Oh, is it under Katsuegger land?
Did someone ser did they seriously take away every single video of this? Hold on, let me at least see if I can get a screenshot of what it looks like. Because basically, the ending of this game is a little silly. Uh, because if you remember Eggerland, the original, the final boss fight was a, basically a rock, paper, scissors. Uh, and Revival of the Egg... Er, Re Revival of the Labyrinth ended with, um... Uh, a RPG fight... Yeah, but it doesn't matter. I cannot find any screenshots. So basically, the gist of it is, it's a giant, it's a fighting game. Like, they, it's like a side-by-side -side fighting game. And it's like, all you can do is punch and jump, and it looks very silly. Um. And yeah. Oop. Oh. Uh-oh. There we go. There we go. Completely lost track of my mouse. Right. So yeah, that's <laughs> Revival Eggerland. I never actually sat down and played through it. Um, it looks like the puzzle quality is not up to snuff. Which is unfortunate. But there. But also, let me scale this. There. So, yeah. That's a little weird. In That's the last Eggerland game. There has not been one since 2000. Um, yeah. Let's uh, do the responsible thing and shut down our computer. Goodbye, Windows 98. And hello. Ranking list. So let me get my ranking list. Okay, so... Let's see the rating. Okay. Last, or like... Let's just go through the series in order. You got Adventure Low 3. Definitely not as good as that. Uh, definitely not as good as that. I would actually argue that... Where... Where is Eggerland? A default. Eggerland defaults at 7, and I have a better... Yeah, and Eggerland Mystery is at 12. I don't think it's as bad as that, but also... Like, it does some neat things, but also it's... The puzzle quality seems like... The fact that they included that really bad one from Revival that requires a glitch is kind of not great. Other than that, it's... Certainly... Feasible. I think a 9, actually, for that one. Also, it's a royal pain in the ass to set up. Which is also kind of annoying. Uh, also, it's coming from me, so you know that it's legit. Um... Let's see. Music is also entirely like 
Recycle from the old ones, which is kind of not great. I really don't like the look of the sprites. It doesn't look good. Also, I kind of actually like the flow of having the combination of both the... Like, having it a very wide-open kind of puzzle thing, I think is kind of neat. And you can tackle it a lot in a lot of different orders. Um, but yeah, uh, also difficulty, um, they stopped doing puzzle design like the earlier Eggerland games for a reason. So there is in fact that. Um, let's see. Um, charms. Um, do I have a hard to set up? Hmm. Maybe I'll just do it like that. Be with PC because it is a royal pain to get to set up. Um. I also want to say pull cheap tricks because the design for the puzzles seem to be more frustrating than not. Uh, and I think that's it. Hmm. So yeah. That is Revival Eggerland. Uh, it definitely... Kind of really weird the fact that that's the franchise that ended up, like, that's how the franchise ended on, and... Yeah. Um... The cars? What did you think was a car? Oh! The recycle sign? Um. Oh. I see. <laughs> the only cheap trick... <laughs> uh, the only cheap trick I saw, I have heard, actually, is... When we watch Rock and Roll, and that's probably... Something I should rectify someday, but, um, yeah. Anyway, Eggerland franchise, occasionally Nintendo, because they have such a tie-in with HAL, um, will occasionally throw in a Adventures at Lolo on one of their services. Um, we, we Virtual Console had Adventures at Lolo 1 and 2. Uh, Japanese version only had 1, which is R2. Um, Wii U only had one as far as I remember. Japanese also only had ver version of two. And the Switch has, I believe, they have Adventure Lolo 1. And the Japanese uh, Famicom 1 has Adventure Lolo 2. So you will also occasionally get references in um, Kirby. Uh, I know Kirby's Mass Attack had a pinball stage that was a very high refer or like very blatant reference to the Eggerland games, like far more than they usually do, other than the appearance of Lolo or Lolo Lo and La La La. Um, so, yeah, uh, the series has kind of remained dormant since then, and the likelihood of it ever not getting becoming undormant 
I would normally say is pretty small, but then again, with the, like, things getting revived in weird times nowadays, um, yeah, it's mostly Cur the older Kirby's where they show up, but they have, they've shown up in newer ones, like, um, that, that one, uh, boss rush one they show up in, um, but yeah. I am holding out hope that eventually we get another one, but I am starting to doubt it. But you know what? I don't really think... I think with the puzzle games that Hal has brought out since, um, in particular Box Boy, I feel like uh, Box Boy is kind of as good as we're... Like, I am satisfied with that as a puzzle, uh, puzzle game from Hal. It is kind of sort of in the same spirit, and I feel like is a bit more what modern audiences would expect of a puzzle game. Uh, and those games are really good. Um, there's actually some, when they were teasing uh, there, cause there's that VR 3D NES simulator. One of the things that showed up during that was a first person view of Adventure Lola 1, which if, and that seemed to never have materialized. If that ever shows up, uh, I would uh, do that in a heartbeat <laughs> uh, because I wonder how I could like if I if my memory of those puzzles are so muscle memory that if I could do those in first person. Uh, it is definitely not the way you'd want to play those games, but you know, what? whatever. Anyway, enough babble. Uh, maybe someday we'll get another Eggerland game. We probably aren't, but if we get another one, I'd certainly be interested. Anyway. Uh, let's talk about what we are doing tomorrow. Well, not tomorrow. On, uh, Friday. Friday. Yes, Friday. Still running out of slight sleep deficit, even though I got sleep yesterday. Anyway. Thank you all for watching. Personal tutorials at Load of Puzzle. Um, I do also have a Discord where you can chat the community and take part in polls and occasionally other stuff as well. I have a Patreon. Two and five dollar tiers helps with hosting costs and various other things. Uh, if you're watching this on a VOD, twitch.tv slash loadapuzzlo, Fridays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Saturdays at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, there, you can watch me live and do these episodes live. Uh, if you want to watch the VODs, the best place to do it is at the YouTube channel, youtube.ldp.life. Monday, Wednesday, Fridays at 8 a.m. Eastern, or, or 8 a.m. Eastern is new uploads. This one will go up on Friday. Uh, and there's also two exclusive shows on the YouTube channel, Media Delta and Hazeltown Story. Those get uploaded Thursdays at 8 a.m. Eastern. Also, if you want to listen to them audioly, which is how they kind of were intended to, uh, you can listen to the podcast channel by going to radio.ltp.life, which will tell you how to get in your podcatcher of choice, or you can look up WLDP Hazeltown Radio in your podcatcher of choice, and it should show up there. So on Friday, we are, in fact, taking a look at the SNES version of Shadowrun. Uh, which is a game that I have played multiple times for about 10 minutes and then just kind of Not out of me thinking it was bad. Just I just I'm like, eh, I'll play it some other day uh, Well, we're gonna play it on Friday and uh, Yeah, it's actually based on a Shadowrun novel and it's the one that of those 16-bit um, Shadowrun games It's the one that I think most people have familiarity with and kind of hold in higher regard Although I know the Mega Drive version has its fans uh, but we'll see you on Friday. Uh, so, uh, continuing with the egg theme, uh, I'm going to send you all over to Real Soviet Bear, who is playing egg-themed games for Easter. And, uh, yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your day. And if you're watching this on a day that's not when this is recorded, I hope you have a good day. Anyway, later. Later.